So now we have uh, John Mark uh, talking about monitoring strawberries. Also happens to be my favorite fruit, which I don't get in India. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for organizing uh, this room. I'm very happy to be here today to discuss uh, how we build observability in our projects uh, at Agricool. So you see, it's not going to be a very technical talk, but uh, what can be interesting for you is that we're going to look at observability from the perspective of IoT and also uh, from uh, agriculture. Because as you will see, we basically leverage IoT technologies to grow fruits and vegetables uh, inside cities. So first, we need to talk about uh, strawberries. Um, I've been living in, in Paris these past two years, and most strawberries you can buy there, uh, they actually come from Spain or Morocco. So they actually do travel a lot before they reach uh, the store. And this is why sometimes on the top of uh, the strawberry you might see some white circles, some uh, a white crown. It's because the fruit was harvested way too early, before its full maturation. And they do that in industrial agriculture so that the fruit can continue the maturation during transportation. Uh, and this is how they can extend the life of the, of the product. But the issue with that is that uh, during the transportation, the fruit is going to attack its own reserve of nutrients. And so when you buy it, it might not be that tasty and the nutritive quality uh, can be very bad. And of course, the second big problem with uh, long transportation is the use of pesticides. So another <coughs> technique used to extend the life of fruits. And it raises a tons of questions about um, the impact of that farming model uh, on our health. So what we try to do at Agricool is um, to get rid of uh, the transportation part in the farming model. So we produce fruits directly inside cities uh, so that we can harvest them at full maturation and so that they are very tasty and very healthy. And of course, always pesticide free. And the way we do this, uh, we, we buy these containers and inside of them, we set up an IoT infrastructure to uh, grow plants and to grow uh, fruits and uh, vegetables. This is how it looks uh, inside. So we always start from a blank uh, container and then uh, we set up uh, vertical columns. We can plug the plants inside these columns. Uh, we have walls of LEDs to provide uh, the lighting and the energy for the photosynthetic activity of the plants. We also set up an irrigation system that goes through uh, the columns. And we also have a um, quite complex uh, climate regulation system made of an industrial air conditioning system and a, a bunch of misting pumps to control the humidity uh, in the air. And also a set of um, air fans to control the, the, air, the air circulation. So whatever we need to set up in terms of uh, sensors and actuators to have perfect control over the condition of stories so that they get like the uh, perfect setup to grow, uh, we install it. Um, so for example, we also install uh, hives from bumblebees so that bumblebees can take care of uh, the pollination of flowers. And this is also something we can control with IoT, so that we can control the door of the hive and so have fine grade control over the exposure between flowers and uh, bumblebees. This is the end result, this is how it looks like. Uh, this one is located in Parc de Bercy, in the very center of Paris. Uh, here is another one decorated by an artist. And so now we have around 15 uh, containers in Paris. Uh, it means that if you buy a punnet of strawberry from Agricool in a supermarket, you know that you're dealing with a fresh product. The harvesting date uh, for the strawberries will always be on the box, so you know you're buying strawberries that were harvested the same day or the day before. And so you know you're dealing with a fruit that is fully matured and uh, with no pesticide. Uh, we've run some analysis to compare strawberries with uh, other strawberries from supermarket. And on average, we reach 20% uh, more sugar and 30% more vitamin C. So pretty high uh, nutritive quality. 
if you want to, to build something like this, you need to run a ton of research on plants. So we are running a couple of buildings in Paris where we have set up uh, this, uh, these cells for experiments. These are like uh, smaller versions of uh, containers. And in each cell, we can test one variable uh, of the environment so that through trial and error, you can, we can discover the perfect uh, recipe for the strawberries. Um, and to run one single experiment, it takes a bit more than three months because that's the time you need to grow strawberries. So it means that you need pretty good reliability during three months in your IoT system. Otherwise, you might mess up the experiment and your results won't be uh, useful. And um, to build an, an infrastructure like that, you need a team of people uh, made of a very diverse set of uh, technical skills. So of course, we are a, a lot of agronomists uh, to run the research. And so they basically discover the, the agronomic uh, recipe. Then our engineers will uh, try to build the physical infrastructure that will make that recipe a reality inside the containers. And then we have the software team made of uh, software developers and DevOps engineers. And so our goal is to work very closely with these engineers and agronomists. So that we write uh, the best IoT infrastructure to automate these containers and make the recipe a reality. So right now uh, we are on the 90, uh, sorry, between 80 and 90 people and uh, seven developers in the software team. So let's look inside. Um, in every container, we install a machine with a Debian instance on it. This machine can communicate with the outside uh, through a 4G connection. And locally, it will uh, communicate with a PLC controller. Um, you can see this controller as a unit that centralizes all the input-output interactions with our uh, devices, so all the sensors and all uh, the actuators. Uh, so basically with this controller in one place, you can read the values of all your sensors and also the positions of all actuators. And you can also forward new commands to change the position of these actuators. Um, on the Debian instance, we can uh, deploy our software stack. Uh, mainly we have a set of uh, uh, microservices written in Golang and a Prometheus instance. So in Prometheus, we will store uh, time series for the values of all our sensors and also the positions of all actuators. And the main goal of uh, the microservices is to regulate the environment in the container. So for example, we have a service for climate regulation. Uh, that service will communicate with Prometheus to read past values from sensors. So it might send an HTTP request to Prometheus to ask uh, what's the average temperature over the last five minutes. And if the service sees that the temperature is far too off from our target, it will run some climate regulation algorithm. And the output of the algorithm might be some new commands for the, for the actuators. So it might decide to change a setting in the air conditioning system or to activate a misting pump to bring more humidity uh, in the air. So um, this is how you can use a PLC controller with time series to to regulate inside. If we zoom out, uh, you can see that we replicate uh, the same infrastructure in every container, and we use uh, Docker images to, to make these deployments. And then uh, in the cloud layer, we deploy all the user-facing uh, web apps to build uh, observability. So all the time series from Prometheus, we centralize them into an influx instance. Uh, we put uh, Grafana on top of it to build all our dashboards and graphs. Uh, we also use Redash to build dashboards of our uh, SQL stored uh, data in our Postgres uh, instances. And we also build quite a few observability pipelines over Slack uh, because uh, all our employees uh, are using it. So for example, in Prometheus, we have uh, alert rules to tell us when there are incidents in the containers. These alert rules will be received on Slack so that we can send the technical support in the container to fix things. And so in these areas, you might, you might find your typical uh, IT rules uh, about uh, your network, your services, uh, CPU loads, memory usage. But you also extend the definition of rules to new uh, layers in the IoT stack. So we write rules for the physical machinery with there and also rules for the plants. So, um, for example, in every water pipes in the containers, 
we have a pressure sensors. And so the values on the sensors are in parameters, so we can detect when there is a huge change uh, in water pressure. And uh, so these changes, they will trigger alerts, and um, uh, they might indicate that there is a leak uh, in the hydraulic system. And so this is how we can send a, a plumber on site uh, to fix it. Um, so when we think about uh, observability, we often think about uh, these techniques, you know, time series, metrics, uh, domain events, traces, alerting. And then we apply them to different sets of abstractions. And so in our projects, what we, we try to do is to be very conscious about extending the application of these techniques to uh, the physical machinery uh, in the containers and also to the world of agronomy and plants. And the only way you can do that successfully is to work very closely with domain experts. You need to involve the engineers and the agronomists in the process so that they can basically educate you about the domain and so that you can discover together what are the most valuable uh, observatory pipelines to build. And when you do that, you will discover new techniques that you need to, uh, to develop. So, for example, inside your containers, we have a set of uh, cameras that take pictures automatically of, uh, of uh, the plants. And the pictures get uploaded to AWS S3. And then we have our agronomists reviewing these pictures. And so they can uh, discover if there is something wrong uh, with the plants by looking at the leaves, at the flowers, at the fruits. So it's very human-centered uh, pipeline, but we'll still consider it uh, as a full observatory pipeline uh, because it's, it gives us really good indication about whether the, the system is healthy or not. And we do this type of uh, human-centered approach uh, in different ways. We send uh, agronomists uh, inside the containers to check the plants we run testing sessions for our strawberries. We analyze um, water samples from the hydraulic system. And we also make a ton of measurements on, on the plants, like measuring the, the size of the leaves to see if the plants are developing correctly. Um, so we always try to automate the pipelines as much as possible. But when it comes to, to plants, it's, it's too complex, and we need uh, to put humans in the loop uh, a lot. So um, some of the specific specific challenges with agriculture. First, we are an IoT company, so we, we have to manage this huge fleet of sensors and, and uh, actuators. And they are distributed in different places in Paris, so it comes with its own uh, set of constraints. Uh, then with plants, you can get a very tough set of uh, agronomic uh, SLAs. So for example, uh, a single incident in one container may be enough to impact the full batch uh, of strawberries. Uh, let's say your irrigation system goes down for a couple hours. Uh, it might be enough to, to damage the entire production and so have a very big impact on the bottom line of the, of the business. Uh, and when it comes to strawberries and uh, berries in general, it can be very tricky because uh, flowers and fruits are super fragile. Uh, we're pretty well known in the indoor farming industry for growing strawberries because most companies, they grow herbs and, and salads. But with berries, you, you need to be, to be very precise in terms of temperature, humidity, uh, irrigation uh, levels. And finally, plants can, are very complex. It's an illusion to believe that you can uh, retro-engineer a, a plant. Uh, it's, it's way too complex. So in practice, what this means is that if there is an incident, you cannot always tell if it has an impact on the plants or not. You can look at them. You might see some, some sign that it's healthy or not but you will never get the full story because you will never know everything that's going on inside the plant. So it's always a good practice when you write a post-mortem to try to measure the impact on your business, but when it comes to plants, it's just super difficult for us to do. So what we've learned by navigating these constraints is that uh, your observatory pipelines, they should always come from an instant. <coughs> so you should not build them just for the sake of coping with the, the ongoing observatory trend. And so to do that, we have this very simple framework that for us, what's valuable is to get feedback on whether we're building the right farming model. Are we going to have great fruits, enough volume, and do our unit economics make sense so that we can scale to multiple cities? And so from that definition, this is what we, we want to see. We want to see observations that help us react to incidents, to understand uh, how the stories respond to the conditions we're giving them, 
We want to also to try to predict what's going to be the yield and quality of the product. And also any insights that could help us improve the unit economics. Um, so for example, in, in our system, we might have a, um, a water pump uh, sending water in the hydraulic system. Uh, if we start monitoring the state of that pump, we may discover that we don't use it uh, that often. Uh, and so in this case, later on, we might make a decision to uh, downgrade it to a cheaper model. And this is how we can make a unit economics decision driven by monitoring data. So let's see the framework uh, in action. Uh, what's always super valuable for us is to assess nutrient absorptions by the plants. Um, so basically, if a plant is absorbing its nutrients correctly, it's going to grow healthy and provide us with uh, great strawberries. One way to do this is to use VPD metrics. VPD stands for vapor pressure deficit. Um, and it's kind of an indicator of the intensity of the transpiration of the plant. Uh, so if you take a plant, uh, the leaves are saturated with water and it needs to diffuse some of, of that water in the air to be able to grow. And uh, this is called the transpiration. And so during transpiration, the nutrients are, are moved inside the plants and this is how they are absorbed. So at every stage of growth of your plant, you need the right level of uh, transpiration intensity. And uh, VPD is a good indicator of that. It's basically uh, a ratio between the level of uh, saturated water in the leaves and the level of saturated water uh, in the air. And what's nice with VPD metrics is that it's fully automated. You've got your time series. You can build the automated reporting on top of it. You can build the alerting. And then we have other pipelines for the same uh, concerns. So we have our cameras that uh, upload uh, pictures for us. And um, if our agronomists look at these pictures and if they see some droplet of waters at very specific times of the day, they may get very valuable information about the, the intensity of transpiration. Uh, we also run uh, water analysis over a uh, water sample from the uh, irrigation system. And if we do that multiple times uh, through time, we may discover some interesting uh, long trend uh, about nutrient absorptions. So again, uh, some uh, automated approach, some semi-automated approach, and we need to put experts in the loop. Uh, this is the only way we can get like, the best observations for us to, to know that uh, our system is working. So all of this, it, it relates to what we start phrasing as a domain-driven observability. So um, the idea that the pipelines you're building, they're not just about techniques, but they are always related to either a, a business objective or uh, some knowledge from, uh, from the field of agronomy. And so in practice, it means that we want our system developers to work very closely with the domain experts. On one hand, you want these experts to share their knowledge about the domain so that developers can learn about uh, physical engineering, uh, about climate regulation, about uh, agronomy, about nutrient absorptions, so that the developers, they know why they're building these pipelines uh, and they know why they should focus and put uh, the priorities. Uh, and on the other end, uh, it's nice for your domain experts to learn about the world of reliability and observability so that then they can understand the technicality and they can put the project in the right direction. So at AgriCool, we have a ton of engineers and uh, agronomists that know a lot of stuff about time series, alerting, Prometheus, Grafana. Uh, we try to talk to them about best practices like post-mortems and defining uh, SLOs or, over, over plants. And the only way to do this uh, is to speak the same language. So you want the wording inside uh, your, your system to be the same as the one used uh, on the field by domain experts. Because if you have some type of cognitive distance between the two, it will be very difficult to, to add new features to the system and it will slow everything down. And you could, you could also have like these um, mis miscommunications that could result in some nasty bugs. For example, if, if we don't have the same VPD definition, uh, we're going uh, nowhere. Um, and so sometimes when we can, we go as far as uh, enabling our domain experts to build observability pipelines themselves. So we have uh, 
non-computer uh, people, if you want, that learn about Influx, that learn to write uh, Influx queries so that they can build their own uh, Grafana uh, dashboards. Uh, we have people learning about SQL so that they can use Redash and build the views over our SQL data. We even, we even designed a web editor for Prometheus alerts so that we have agronomists that can write their own Prometheus alert rules and it will get deployed in any container they want uh, for them. Uh, and so it's kind of a trade-off because uh, you are putting more people in the loop, uh, so there are more risk for errors or not following the best practices. Uh, but on the other end, um, you remove the bottleneck from the small software team and everyone learns about building authority pipelines and you can move much faster. So in a startup, this is like kind of a trade-off that you need to navigate. So that's it uh, for the slides. I guess my final message is that um, observability is not just about techniques. Uh, it's very much about the application domain. And so I think most projects would benefit from bringing domain experts in the observability journey and uh, to teach them about the best practices. And uh, yeah. So we are, um, we are a growing startup. Uh, we are hiring. So if you like the kind of stuff we're building, feel free to send us a message. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, we have four minutes for questions. Please don't get up. Please only get up after Q&A is over. Thank you for the talk. Is any of what you show here open source? Uh, no, we, we don't do a part. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we're not doing a open source uh, right now, uh, but we, we want to do it in the future. Right now, we're trying to figure out how to grow these plants. So we're not investing in uh, opening stuff because we're not ready to bring that kind of, of quality. But we, we are very much looking to, to, to build some type of uh, indoor farming community uh, st starting in, in Paris and run some open source hackathon and this kind of stuff. But it's the very beginning for us. And so we really hope like in the coming months to bootstrap something here. Hi, uh, I have a question. Uh, so you mentioned there are a lot of manual work in, uh, involved when uh, your colleagues are looking at the pictures. Do you have plans on implementing, I don't know, like uh, machine learning models uh, to automate this process? Because essentially they're yeah. classifying. Yeah, they say they can say it's good, bad, or they classify the disease or something. Something happens. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We we started uh, looking at it. Uh, so right now we, we, we do the uh, manual approach basically because we don't have time to build uh, the computer vision stuff. We see it as like a new research project because it's very hard to estimate the effort you need to put into this. Since we, already have, have, we always have the constraint of already running research on plants, we, we try to remove that risk. But we, we could definitely, because we know the dates for each picture, we could definitely do some supervised learning about try to estimate uh, the level of growth of the plants, try to discover this water droplet automatically. So we don't have a nicely tagged data set today, but it's definitely going to at scale something we want to do to, um, to, to make this objective pipeline better. Yeah. How can we compare agriculture to the normal farming in its effective? And, uh, how many containers do we, do we need to cover needs of strawberries for Dubai like, or some small town? So it depends on what you mean by effective. Uh, if you mean by, by uh, yield, volume of production? Yes, volume of production comparatively to the normal village is it grows. Yeah. So um, it's, it's much more productive than uh, classical agriculture in terms of the surface you need to use. Um, so what we, uh, right now we're producing between 15 and 20 kilograms per square meter per year. So it's much, much more than uh, uh, industrial agriculture in terms of the, um, uh, the space uh, you, you need to use. So what's the big challenge today is more about the unit economics and make it work, uh, like make this investment in this big IoT infrastructure worth um, so we get much better yield, but we still uh, a, uh, a way to go before um, 
make him workable at a, at a bigger scale. So we have one more question. Uh, have you planned uh, something else than uh, strawberry? Yes. Uh, so our stories are in supermarket, and for a few weeks now we have uh, uh, herbs, uh, so coriander, uh, basil, salads uh, that are getting in the store. So th these are more easy to produce in terms of uh, the reliability level you need to reach in the system. And yeah, our goal is to, in the future, try to, uh, to address all the main vegetables and foods that people uh, have in their fridge. Uh, but right now, yeah, we focus on, on herbs, salads, and, uh, and strawberries. Cannabis? Sorry? Cannabis? <laughs> no, no. no. Yeah. America or Canada, yeah, but um, okay. yeah, it's, it's a good question, yeah. So uh, no, th this is not something we want to do today. Uh, we, so we are, we are not just an IT company. We are, first, we are a fruit and vegetables brand. That's, that's, that's our project. So we are very much about food. Um, and so we are focusing on uh, strawberries and, and vegetables. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.